a time of marvels, a culture of industry, an era of technology. Then, in the blink of an eye, the greatest nations of the world were plunged into darkness. But underneath all the anarchy and chaos lies the wonders of the world before, just waiting to be discovered by our stalwart heroes, Jules McCaffrey and his partner Quinn. Join them as they scour the ruins of yesterday, brave the dangers of today, all to find the key to a brighter future in the dark lands of the world before. Today's episode, Come Whatever May. Good morning, Jules. Oh, sweet mother of God. Get up, the day is starting. Ugh, is this going to be a recurring thing, my long-eared compatriot? Well, you'd be excited too if you were stuck in a cage for two weeks. Try three, but I understand. So, what's for breakfast? Whatever a few cans of oil, an abacus, and 14 pieces of paper can afford. You said you had lots of food. Food for me. Unfortunately, I wasn't expecting to have a fuzzball join me for breakfast. Let's hope there's something in the market for you to eat. Oi, who's in there with you, Jules? You told me a room for one, you cheat. Good morning to you too, Polly. Out of the way, you scum. Who's in here? Look around, Polly. It's just me and... Don't you try and pull a fast one on me, you snake. I heard another voice in here. I was talking to myself. <clears throat> Good morning, Jules, old pal. What is there for eats? <laughs> that son is really cooking your head, ain't it? Like a well-done steak. Now, uh, can you please get out and let me put some pants on? Oh, I, uh, uh. Watch yourself, McCaffrey. Kind of hard to do without a mirror, Polly. I think it'd be safer for both of us if you kept quiet around other people, Quinn. You don't need to tell me that. I know you humans don't like mutants. Well, that's part of it. We humans are a little more complex than that. No doubt some would hate you for being different, but I know folks who would worship you as some kind of tiny adorable god, and others who would love to cut you open and... You defecated. Of course I did. People want to worship me? That's too much pressure. Anyway, all this talking isn't going to fill your belly any faster. Let me put on my pants and... Why are they wet? I'm sorry, Jules. It was late. You were asleep and I really had to go and... It's fine. It's fine. This morning could be going smoother. Look at that horizon, Quinn. Doesn't that just fill you with excitement? I was born in this desert, Jules. Sand is sand. How could you say that? Look how the orange bleeds into the sky as the dawning sun welcomes the day. It's a sight that promises opportunity. It makes me just want to chase that sun. Still just looks like desert to me. <sighs> Never mind. Ugh. When is Opportunity going to get here? It's been hours. At my trade, Quinn, it takes a lot of time, patience, and no small amount of luck to find the good stuff. You just need to have a keen eye. A clean eye? No, keen eye. I mean, you need to know what to look for. The ruins of the world before are full of surprises. Aren't these cars from the world before? Ah, those have been picked clean. Say, Quinn. I couldn't help but notice you have a rather extensive education and understanding of the English language. Where exactly did you learn all of it? Books. Books? Uh, fair enough. Can I ask where you came from? I told you, I was born in the desert. <laughs> I see. You're not going to make this easy on me, are you? Nope. Alright, alright. I won't press if you don't want to talk. Jules? Yes, Quinn? Are there really not other rabbits like me in the desert? You would know better than me. After all, you were born in the desert. I'm serious. Are there really no rabbits like me out here? Sorry, chum, but I haven't seen any rabbits like you. Both in genus and vocal capacity. Oh, okay. Is there a 
particular reason why you ask? Yes, I... It's a little embarrassing for me to say it out loud. Again, if you don't want to talk... I want a mate. A mate? Yes, a beautiful, gorgeous, and literate creature to call my own. And by literate, you mean... You don't expect me to shack up with any common trollop. All you ever want to do is breed, breed, breed. There's no passion, only pure carnal lust. I want to be with someone I can have long, meaningful conversations with. Someone who looks at me more than just a piece of meat. <laughs> you really thought this out, haven't you? Of course. Don't you feel the same way? Don't you want to spend the rest of your life with someone who gives you purpose? I'll be honest with you, little friend. I already found someone who gives me purpose. She is the world before. Not many pine for her, and she has a fair share of secrets. But there's a certain allure to her that keeps me from settling. When I walk her roads, when I feel her sun on my face, the cold chill of her breath through my hair, I feel more alive than I have ever been. Wow, that's kind of pathetic. Pathetic? The world before is it a mate? That's so stupid. You're weird, Jules. Stupid is a little far, don't you think? You're right. I'm sorry. Hey, world before, do you reciprocate Jules's feelings? It sounds like she's just as weirded out by you as I am. Our requited love is so tragic. <laughs> Keep laughing, you brat. I hear rabbit's feet are good luck. My feet are good luck? That's stupid. It's something the people of the world before used to believe. Obviously, there isn't much evidence to support it. After all, I've got four, and I'm not neck deep in treasure. The people of the world before sound like idiots. Idiots? Far from it. They're the artisans of the world, Quinn. They build shining cities with buildings as tall as mountains that could pierce the clouds. They created advanced technology so far beyond our understanding and a vast network of information that they could access whenever they pleased. Then what happened? They became too dependent, too comfortable with their technology. They believed no force in the world could take from them what was theirs. <laughs> I guess they were right, because ironically it was the sun that took it all away from them. The sun? Then the devils of mankind finished the job. The day the world before became the Darklands. We call it Black Halloween. Are you okay? <sighs> so, Quinn, the point is the people of the world before weren't idiots. But they destroyed the world! Because where they excelled in intelligence, they lacked in wisdom. Kind of like you, Quinn. How dare you? Ah, you bit me. Because you deserved it, you creep. I ought to stick you in a stew for that. I don't think that would be very wise. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. A nice warm fire. You made it quick. It took the hunter you saved me from 20 whole minutes just to get a spark. <laughs> I figured Carmichael was more of a colonist than a Darklander. Say, Quinn, why didn't you try talking with him like you did with me? Carmichael may be a hunter, but he's not above reason. Be because he said he hated freaks. Oh, really? Yeah, he was sitting by the fire that took him 40 minutes to make, and eating some food when he said it. He was eating some apricots, and he didn't like them, and then he said if it weren't for those darn freaks, he would have to eat apricots. Sounds to me like some fuglies ran off with some of his stock. Well, I retract my previous statement about you being unwise, Quinn. I forgive you for your ignorance. And so you know, just because you're a talking rabbit doesn't necessarily make you a freak. But you said there were people who would hurt me if they knew I could talk. There are. Just like how there are people out there who would hurt me for being a Darklander. Or even for being a man. But that doesn't make me a freak. 
A good word to describe you, my friend, is unique. Sure, not everyone will know the difference, but in my opinion, there isn't any similarities between you and... Was that Jules? Freaks. The scrappers got little sleep that night, eyes constantly surveying the darkness, watching, waiting for whatever devils lie in the shadows of the dark lands. It is with relief when they see the dawning sun creep its orange glow over the horizon. With optimism in their hearts and a skip to their step, Jules McCaffrey and Quinn make their way down the road and towards parts unknown. Subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss the next exciting episode of The Dark Lands of the World Before!